and those little buggets that cut a hole in my fence. We're gonna use two pole jacks, two tension bars, and two feet of fabric. Make sure if you're gonna tackle or repair yourself, you figure out what fabric you're dealing with, what gauge, and make sure that it'll weave together. Let's do the faster version of this repair. The get her done style. Yeah, we'll use some zip ties. Weather resistant even. Good as new. That's how I feel about wasting a whole Saturday fixing a fence. Now, if you have more class than that, stay tuned for the rest of the video. We'll show you how to fix it right. So first, we can see this tie is where the hole is. So we need to cut that tie out. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out what to take out. So this has been cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo the knuckles. This straw right here, if I take it from the very top all the way down, it's still one whole straw. So I can see that this straw right here, this one's a, one of the ones they cut. So we're gonna continue cutting it the rest of the way. Now we're gonna do that exact same thing, but only continuing down. For either of these two, make sure to see the links below. Love the nines very much. One of my favorite fencing tools. And the nippets are also a great cutter for cutting chain link. Okay, so right here, we're back to one straight straw. So all that damaged chain link is done. Now we're just gonna do the exact same thing, but since there's not any more pressure on the chain link, since it's not tight, we can now just untwist itself. And then we can see that's the other half of that. So down here, undo that. Cut that out. We can see that there's a hog ring there. And we're gonna go back up to this straw now that it's cut. We're gonna pull it out. All the damaged chain link has now been pulled out. That's a factory straw, and that's a factory undamaged straw. So now what we need to do is we need to fill these sections, but before we fill it, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and splice a piece of fabric in there and then figure out how to stretch it. We have a half of a straw. It's not a whole diamond like this is, this is just a half. We need a whole diamond over here so that we can weave in the other half of this diamond. Right here, I have a whole diamond. Don't be looking at this. This is only a half a diamond. Right here, I have a whole diamond at top and at the bottom end, I have a half a diamond. I'm missing the other side of this straw to make a whole diamond. So what I'm gonna do is, the side that is my whole diamond, I'm gonna take that and stand that up. This is gonna be the side that I weave into. See how they fit perfectly? We have our half and we have our full. I'm gonna take a straw and I'm gonna just screw it in, just like you'd screw anything else in. Make sure it goes from one to the other, through that one to the next one. If you're missing one, what's gonna happen is, is probably everything is gonna get a little bit tight, maybe get in a bind. And if it starts getting tight and you're having a hard time winding the straw in, check to make sure that you went through every diamond because chances are you might've missed one. Now we have two knuckles that are unbent. We're gonna put them back to each other like that. And bend the tails back. Now that is back to a factory diamond. We're gonna do the exact same thing we just did there on the bottom. Now the question is where to cut it. We need to look for a full diamond. So this needs to marry with another full diamond. That's too loose. So I have to go all the way to this one to see if that would be, and that is really tight. I'm having a hard time pushing that together. So that, that's telling me that I'm gonna hit this one. If I go to that one, I'm gonna stretch the chain link too far and start causing it to shrink in height.
I just undid the knuckle. Now I'm gonna twist it to see where my joint is that I'm gonna undo on the bottom. As I twist, I can see and follow it all the way down. Now I'm gonna take that straw out. I'm gonna save the straw that I just took out. So I'm gonna use that to weave these two pieces of fabric back together. And again, I have a full and I have a half. That straw that I just took out is my missing piece. So now what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use two pole jacks. The pole jacks are gonna just damage the wire itself if you try to pull on it directly. So we're gonna use two tension bars. One is a six foot and one is a four foot. Ideally what I would use is I'd use two four foots, but this is just what I happen to have. So you don't wanna put the tension bar in on the very last one because you wanna be able to thread your straw through that last link. We don't wanna crowd the area too much. So we're gonna give ourselves just a little bit more room. Now some of you guys may not have pole jacks or never have a need for them. A ratchet strap, you could use one of those but because the ratchet's so long, you may have to go further back with your tension bars. So therefore you're gonna have to try to stretch a lot more, maybe a come along, something like that. Anything to be able to pull. You wanna pull just hard enough to be able to get you to get some slack in there so that you can insert that straw. If you're gonna do a six foot tall repair, three pole jacks, definitely. We're gonna bend that knuckle all the way down so that way it catches the next link for us. Sometimes you may have to help it along. Now you may be thinking, how come you don't take the top pole jack and move it down here to help you? Because if I do that, this is now under pressure and I can't spin it anymore. Chances are the closer you get to the bottom, the harder it's gonna get. I'm trying to use the nines to help me twist it because I could twist it by hand at the top, but what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start twisting this and causing it to start spinning, ruining the straw. Yay, we made it. That sucked, I mean, that was so much fun. All because somebody cut my fence. Bunch of jerks. Let's talk about one other stretching method, especially if you're dealing with a six, seven, eight foot tall fence. Do you really wanna use five or six pole jacks? Probably not. So these chain link rakes, what you're gonna do is you'd put one there, one here, with a come along or a chain walker in the center. These come in the lengths of three, five, and I believe six. Make sure to see the links below if this can help you. Now, before we can say that we're done, we gotta put one more tie on that, one more hog ring. That tie should have gone right there. And we gotta put one more hog ring on. We're gonna go straight down from that tie. That hog ring goes right there. Make sure to see the link below if you thought that was awesome. There's the repair. Same rules apply for any various heights. If you're gonna go to a five, if you're gonna go to a six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14. I don't wanna help anybody with a 14 foot tall repair. That doesn't sound like a good time at all. Uh -uh. So now if you guys wanna see how we built this fence from scratch, make sure and see this video right here. And if you wanna see how to build a commercial grade chain link fence with barbed wire, make sure and see this video right here. Stand with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company and you have a good dang day.